Hi, my name is Maddie Tate. I'm from Hannah's High School in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Um, my APU research project is on occupational therapy and how it is needed in high schools. My research question was, how have the advancements of occupational therapy improved to help students with disabilities? So looking into occupational therapy, I kind of um, took it down to looking specifically into schools, elementary age to high school, and um, specifically students with So I looked at occupational therapy, um, some of the differences from other types of therapy, so like speech therapy and physical therapy. Occupational therapy is kind of seen as a combination of those two. So you look at the physical aspects of it and the mental aspects of it, and the occupational therapists kind of put it together. Um, occupational therapists have to be like creative thinkers and think outside of the box to help their patients, and a lot of times it differs from patient to patient. So, um, they have to look specifically at patients' temperaments. So when dealing with a student with disabilities, like if a student has Down syndrome, they're probably not going to be the same as another student with Down syndrome. They have to um, look, maybe one's shy, one's outgoing, and kind of look from that aspect. Um, I looked more into Kentucky schools since I live in Kentucky, and my mentor was in a Kentucky school, so that's kind of where her priorities were. And I looked from elementary age to high school age, and then a quote about occupational therapy. Occupation has been recognized as a means of treatment for mental and physical illness since the 18th century. Since the 18th century. Long before the term occupational therapy was first used to label and market in the 1900s. And my purpose and hypothesis. So my hypothesis was um, students with special needs who begin occupational therapy at an earlier time in life will reap more cognitive and physical benefits than those beginning so um, one of my like case studies kind of looked at um, like students starting or children starting um, occupational therapy kind of before they get to elementary school and how they kind of um, see more benefits than those who start maybe in middle school or high school. And um, that's why I believe all schools should have occupational therapists provided for students with disabilities. <coughs> Um, looking at my literature review, a case study by APRIG used a, um, a case study by APRIG looked into the transition from early childhood to mainstream schools for students with disabilities. So that's what I was just talking about, um, and how they see more benefits than those who start at a later age. This supports my hypothesis that students with special needs who begin occupational therapy earlier in life have a smoother transition from um, school to school. Another study I looked at was by Emerald Katrina and Sixado, um, and that looked into war and rehabilitation. So it didn't really have specifically to do with um, students or like people with disabilities, but it did look at soldiers who had served and how occupational therapists um, look at the mental and physical needs of a person. And that study kind of gives you perspective on how it combines physical therapy and um, Another study that I looked at was, this is the one that I'll be showing the charts from, is by um, Champagne and Dugas. Um, it's a case study that focuses specifically on equestrian therapy, so like therapy with horses, and um, for children with Down syndrome. And that kind of looked at the motor skills and how like fine gross motor skills both, um, you can see benefits in both of those from equestrian therapy. And that supports my hypothesis and gives more of a specific look. So it was specifically that students with Down syndrome and at equestrian therapy, which is a form of occupational therapy. <coughs> um, another study that I looked at, uh, looked at another form of occupational therapy, which is then sensory integration therapy, and that's for children with high functioning autism. So that's just kind of like another aspect. So like, you could, as an occupational therapist, you could look at sensory integration against equestrian therapy when looking at your um, patient. So if a patient has autism, sensory integration therapy might work better than for a student with uh, um, Down syndrome. And then looking at my methodol methodology, um, I didn't do any surveys because that would kind of be a, um, that would be kind of unethical. Um, so I looked more at past case studies done by researchers and occupational therapists and kind of 
based on all of my research on theirs. Um, an issue that I came across was, of course, like since I wasn't performing these by myself, um, like depending on a therapist, and I had to find more recent case studies because like case studies that were done 50 years ago might not be as relevant. And my mentor also helped a lot. Um, she's the occupational therapist for Thomas Independent Schools in Northern Kentucky. So the research that she gave me was was specifically for. Some of my results, so this is the case study I was talking about, it's by Dugas and Champagne. Um, this study focused on um, children with Down syndrome and equestrian therapy. And Down syndrome creates motor deficits that can cause slower reaction times. So this study kind of helped see benefits from that. Um, they looked at fine and gross motor skills. And here's a quote from the study. So this is um, one of the charts that was from the study. You can see that they compared two different children, so there's child one and child two, um, both the different positions uh, positions on the horse. So there was facing forward on the horse, sitting sideways, facing backwards, and um, there was different amounts of time on each of these. And later charts will show like the benefits kind of. So from this, you can see. Um, these are the different scores. This is the pre-test, like this darker one. And this is the post-test. So you can see for all of them, uh, the post-test is normally better. Uh, the test is what was shown for the test that was performed. And the main goal was to um, stimulate balance and mus muscle control. So like when you're on a horse, it engages like your core and your head. It'll talk about that later. Uh, so for child A, what they looked at was head and trunk control, so that's kind of like your core. Um, so a person with Down syndrome needs better control of that. So if you start with a uh, child, equestrian therapy, you'll see benefits in like gross motor skills, so like running, walking, that type of thing. Um, this is child B. So both of those show better head and trunk control for the before. Um, so before that therapy, it wasn't as good. And then after that, it showed better control. So fine motor skills from like holding onto the horse and gross motor skills from controlling your body while riding the horse. Um, just for my discussion. So all of the research I looked into did support my hypothesis that um, students with special needs who begin occupational therapy at an earlier time in life will reap more cognitive and physical benefits than those beginning therapy later in life. <coughs> An occupational therapist who helps students may interact with many different ages and temperaments. So that's kind of what I talked about earlier. They need to be prepared for different types of situations. So literally it varies from case to case. Even though a student may have the same kind of disability as another, their temperaments may vary. And um, school-based therapists can work alongside teachers and parents to help figure out what best uh, fits that student. And um, they also need to look at the school environment. So, future implications. Um, in Northern Kentucky, students with disabilities have um, the opportunity to go to schools such as Northern Kentucky University and participate um, in different classes. So, if a student started occupational therapy like, um, younger, then they may have a better chance of going and going to school and like, being able to participate with other students. And an occupational therapist can help these students um, set that as a goal to like go to college and help become more independent later on. And then my conclusion, um, in Kentucky, schools are responsible for looking at a student's needs and deciding whether a physical therapist or an occupational therapist or a speech and language therapist will best accommodate that child's needs. <coughs> uh, like I said earlier, an occupational therapist most often supports the physical and the mental needs of the students, so it kind of combines um, other types of therapists. And that means that they need to work on skills that they would be used in a school setting to like holding a pencil and like writing your name. And um, like I said with the equestrian therapy, since that helps with motor, con motor control, uh, students with disabilities will be more likely to go out and like run and play with other students, so that'll kind of help with like the social aspect. Looking at fine gross motor skills and 
Finally, the field of occupational therapy is growing more and more every year. And as it grows, the ideas and creative minds coming into that field are figuring out more ways to do it.